All right, so this is, again, dealing with Access Chapter 4, and this is creating and using professional forms and reports moving beyond tables and queries. So, so far, we've been talking about your tables and your queries, but the forms and reports, those are really good because the forms make it really easy for you to enter data, and then the reports can display the data vi very visually and a lot, a lot nicer for you, okay? So for example, this is an example of a form, and I know you've seen this already um, as you've been working with this. And so this allows you to enter data very easily, okay? And then this is an example of, you can also have a, a sub form. So this is an example of a stacked layout, and then this is a tabular layout. So this almost looks just like a table. And basically, in essence, that's what it, it is, okay? And then this is a report, and this is a multiple or a form. This is multiple items form. So we see here sales reps, and then we see here entries for, for them, and that's a form. allows you to do your data entry. And so modify entering data. You can just click, type, pretty much just like you did with your tables, but again it's just a little bit easier for you and again you can arrange use the arrange tab to uh, again arrange how things are and insert where rows and columns go okay and then you have the field list which this lists out all of your fields and then you can click you can to insert them and then you can drag them wherever you need them to be and then you can change the font color of the data and also of the labels. And you see here how they have a blue background behind the product ID. So you can change that, you know, any, any way that you would like to do that. And then we have the themes gallery. And again, this allows you to change the entire look of your forms, okay? And then we see here that we can add more rows And then you can sort records on the form just the same as what, what we did before, okay? And then this is an example of a tabular report. And uh, you can create reports using the reports tools. This is so the wizard for that. And they're showing you that. And then this is an example of a print preview. And so these are mailing labels. And so makes it really easy. You can, you know, print mailing labels. You're doing a mailing. You can, can do that. And so we see this is print preview. We can make sure that they look correct and that the information is correct, that this is, that these are in fact the names that we want. And then if it was, since we're doing labels, we'd have to put label paper in the printer, make sure we have it in there right, and then we'd be able to uh, go ahead and, and print it. Okay. And then again, this is the different views of the report. One of the things you can also do with reports is you can also export them as PDF documents. So that's great if you're sharing this with other people that maybe they don't have access, but maybe they are working within your organization. You can save it as a PDF and that makes it easy for you to share it rather than printing it out. You can just save it as a PDF and then they can, can view it very easily. And then you can see here again the design tab, how we can do, we can add um, different fields to our reports. Again, you have the same options. You can uh, change the orientation, so either portrait or landscape. You can also uh, make some other changes to it. Again, you can change the theme. And so this is an example of the retrospect theme that was applied to the report. But again, there's uh, several in there that you can use and you can adjust your grouping. So we see here uh, brand and then discount brand, and then we see everything that's associated with that and then the house brand, everything that's associated with that. Okay. So we see that forms and reports, that they're database objects, they're the same as what your tables and your queries are. 
we see that forms improve data entry and editing because they make it a little bit easier for you to do that. Uh, form tools enable you to create customized professional looking forms. Reports display information in a meaningful format. And we also see that report tools enable you to create a variety of reports. So if you open up your textbook to page 880, we see here that we're going to, first of all, learn how to do forms. After talking with Ryung about her data entry needs, you decide to create several simple uh, sample forms using different formats. You will show each form to Ryung to get feedback and see how, if they, if she has any preferences for it. And so step one is we're going to create forms using the forms tool. And you will create a number of forms using different layouts. And again, you can refigure, refer to figure 4.16 as you complete step one. All right, so then we'll go ahead and go ahead and go over here to 881. Step A, they want us to open up AO4H1 Coffee. So I've already downloaded my exercise files and have them available. Again, I get the security warning, so I'm gonna go ahead and click to enable content, and then I need to save it first. So then I'm gonna go up here to File, go to Save As. Again, I'm saving the database, Access Database, Save As. And then I'll have to choose where I'd like to save it to. So, so then I'll save it A04H1 coffee underscore my last name and then my first name. Okay. So you'll you again, whatever your first and last name is, we'll hit save. There it is. And we'll hit OK. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the customers table. Okay, so we see our tables here on the left. So there's our customer table. And, oh, we actually didn't have to open it, pardon. Close it. So actually what we can do is just click on it to select it. And then we'll go up here to the create tab. And we'll go ahead and click on forms or just click on form, so create form. And there it is. So Access creates a new form using the two record sources. Customers with a stack layout on top and orders with the data sheet layout below. Access detected a many to one relationship between the customer and orders table, so it created a main form with its associated subform below it the form opens in layout view. So this is, is the layout view. All right. And let me move this out of the road. So if we scroll down, you'll see then. So we see here for this person, for McAfee, Rand, and this other, it contacts Paula Fields. Everything dealing with the customers there, and then we see these are the orders. So that's an order ID number, the date the order was placed, and then the payment method. All right. So we see that. And so we want to ensure that the top box contains C0001, which it does as the customer ID. The text box is outlined with a shaded border, the yellow shaded border. Move the pointer to the right edge of the shaded border until the pointer changes to a double headed arrow. Drag the right edge to the left until it's approximately half its original size. So you see here, I get to the edge, notice that it becomes a double-headed arrow. I click, hold down the mouse, and I drag it so it's about half the size. So all the text boxes and the subform at the bottom adjust in size when you adjust the top text box. This is characteristic of layout view, enabling you to modify all controls at once. So if we scroll down, we'll see that this also changed. Okay. So it says on step D, it says ensure that the labels to the left of the text box is display without being cut off in there. They're not, it looks good. If they are cut off, adjust the size of the labels as you did in step C. We don't need to, so we're good there. And then they want us to go ahead and hit the save button on the quick access toolbar. So we'll do that. So we'll save it. 
and then they want us to save the form. We haven't saved the form yet. And they want us to call it customer information as a form name in the save as dialog box, which is right here and then hit okay. So now we've saved our form. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and click on this, the title of customers. We'll click it again. We're going to go ahead and change the title so that it now says customer information. Okay, because this is just the title of the form. So we'll do that. We'll press enter and that, that changes that. And then step G, it says to verify the customer table is selected in the navigation pane, which it is. And then we're going to go up here to the create tab. And then we're going to go down here to more forms. This time what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a split form. So then if we scroll down and click anywhere in the Coulter office supplies record. So if I scroll down and I find the Coulter office supplies, I click it. Notice that when I click it down here, notice that then it takes me to it up here on the top. Okay. And then this time, click on the customer's title at the top of the form to select it. Click customers again and change it to customer split view. So, so we'll go ahead and change this. Instead of customer information, we'll change it to customers. And then dash split view. We'll press enter to accept it. We'll hit save, and then we'll go ahead and type that in also for the name of the form. And then we'll press OK. So notice now that we have three forms down here. And then they want us to go ahead and close the form. Go ahead and close the form. So we'll just right click, close, and we'll right click. So go ahead and, and open, go over to page. 882. And so this time what we'll do is we'll do step K. So we'll go ahead and click on the products table in the navigation pane. And then for that, what we'll do is then we'll go up here to create and then under forms, we'll click on more forms. And then we'll go ahead and click on multiple items. So then it automatically generates a multiple items form for us. So then we'll click on the products title. We'll go ahead and double click on that and we'll call it products. And then we'll do a, a space and a dash and we'll go ahead and call this multiple items. All right. And then they want us to go ahead and save it. And then we'll go ahead and call it products, multiple items. So I know this is pretty simple so far, right? And then we can go ahead and close that form because for right now we're, we're finished with that. And then we'll go ahead and select the orders table on the left. And then we'll just, we'll go up here to create. And then we'll just go ahead and click form. And then that creates an orders form. And then notice that the form is a form with a subform showing each line of the order. So we see here the main order, and then we see each product that they ordered. And then what we'll do is we'll go up here to the home tab. And then under views, we'll go ahead and click on that. We'll go down here. So this right now we're in layout view. So we're going to go into design view. Okay. And you notice then that the screen changes. We'll click anywhere in the sub form, which is this bottom piece right here. We'll click that. Then we'll press the delete button on the keyboard in order to delete that. So the sub form is removed. 
So then if we go back, we click on views and we go to form view, we notice then that that sub form that was down here is gone. So then we'll go ahead and hit the save button and we'll save this form as order information. Then we'll go ahead and press okay. So now we're on step two. Oh, and I want us to go ahead and close all open objects. So we can go ahead and close that form. Okay. So now for step two. Now that you've created several forms, you will show Ryung how to test the forms for usability. Refer to figure 4.17 as you complete step two. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and step A, we'll right click on the customer information form and in the shortcut menu, click open. Now you could also open it just double clicking on it. All right. And then we'll advance to the sixth customer. So again, you see down here records and which record we're on. So we can click the arrow to go to the sixth customer, which is Lugo Computer Sales. So we're now on, on their record. And then we'll go ahead and double click on the customers table. So now you have two tabs. You have the customer information form and you have the customers table. And then we see here that the sixth record is Lugo computer sales. And again, you can click between them. So you see that they both show the same information. And then what we'll do is we'll go on the customer information uh, form and for the name you see the contact we're going to change the contact there so instead of Adam Sanchez we're going to put our name there so then notice if I go to the customers so if we go ahead and we have to go to the next record so if we change that notice now that it's going to display okay so we see that so if we change it in one place in the form, we see then it is going to change it in the table, okay? And so then the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and we'll go ahead and close out everything there. And then what we want to do is in step F, we're going to open up the customer split view form, which is right here. And then if we go down to Lugo Computer Sales right here, we'll see that we have that record. So we know, we see that it copies, it changes it there as well. But we see, we notice that there's a mistake. We see that the word service is misspelled because it's supposed to be the email address is supposed to be service at lugocomputer.net. So we're gonna go ahead and correct the name service. And again, we notice then that it changes it down there, okay? And if we go to the next record, then that saves it. All right, go ahead and flip on over to page 884. So this is to use the layout view to modify the form's design. So what we're going to do is that you will make some changes to the layout based on feedback that Ryung gave you after seeing the forms in action. You will also add a missing field to the main table and then add it to the form. We'll go up here to view and we'll go ahead and go to layout view. And then we'll go ahead and flitter bar until it almost touches the cell drop ID. So about like so, so just move it down a little bit and then we'll go ahead and save and close. So we, we go to close the save and then we can close. All right. So now we'll go ahead and open up the product multiple uh, form. We see that. And then we'll point to the bottom edge of product ID in layout view. So we'll go ahead and click up here, make sure we're in layout view because we want to change the layout. So we'll click on the bottom edge of P001 and then the, notice that it, the mouse pointer changes to a double headed arrow. We'll drag the bottom edge up in order to reduce the height like so. 
so that the rows are as tall as they need to be to accommodate the information because the rows were too, too tall. And again, if you change the height of one row, it's going to affect it because you're in layout view, it's going to affect all of them. Okay. And then we'll click anywhere in the cost column. So we see the cost column right here. So we'll just click on any of those. And then we'll go up here to under a range. And then we want to select the column. So we want to select that entire column. And then we'll press the delete key on the keyboard that deletes that that column. You could also right click on in the column and then you could select delete column. We also want to delete the percent markup so we can click on that right click and then go down here to delete column and then that deletes, deletes that. And then click on the refrigeration needed the label to select it and then we'll change the label to the abbreviation refridge question mark. So if we delete what's in there, we can say refridge and in a question mark. And then we can resize the column so that it is, it is wide enough to display the text. So we'll go ahead and click and then drag it just so it's just wide enough to display the because otherwise it was too wide. And then we can go ahead and save and close the, uh, the form. All right, so we'll flip on over is we're on page 885, step E. We're going to go ahead and open up the custom information form and in layout view. So we'll go to the forms, custom information. We'll right click, we'll go into layout view and this time what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make sure that we're under the form layout tools that we're on design. And then we notice we have themes. So we'll click on themes and we'll go down and we'll choose the slice theme. Notice what happens though, if I hover, you can see that it changes a little bit. slice. So it's this one right here. So we'll choose the slice theme. And what we want to do is we want to right click on that and say to apply this theme to this object only. We don't want to change it for all of them. We just want to change it for this object. Okay. Notice too, we're not going to, but notice too, you could go under color and if you kind of hover over these, it'll, it'll change, okay, if you click on them, okay? We don't want to do that, but you can. So what we'll do too is we want to go ahead and click on the Format tab. So Format right here. And then for the Shape Fill, which is up here, we'll click on that and we'll choose Light Turquoise background two under the theme colors. Okay. The background color of the customer ID field changes to light turquoise. The theme colors in the palette are those that are built into the slice theme. If for some reason you did the wrong thing and this entire thing turned turquoise, you could go up here to undo and then make sure to go ahead and select just that field. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is in step H is under the customer name, we're going to click on that. And we're going to go ahead and change the font size there to 16. So we'll click under the font size. And we can change that to 16. The customer's name appears in a larger font, setting it apart from the other fields. And so then we'll go ahead and save and close. All right. And then step J is we'll right click on the customer's table. 
and then we'll go down to design view. So that opens up the table in design view. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the home page hyperlink field to the customer table. So then we'll click on the address one field and then we'll go up here and we want to insert rows. So then that inserts a row right between email and an address one. We're going to go ahead and call this home page and then we'll go ahead and, and go over and then for the data type, we'll select that and we'll choose hyperlink. And then we can go ahead and save and close the customer's table now. All right, so now what we can do is in step in is we want to go ahead and right click on the customer information form and then go down to layout view. And so now we're going to add the home page field to our customer information form. So then under the tools group in the design group, so design, and then we see um, I guess those are the tools. So we'll go ahead or under tools right here, add existing field tools right here. So we see here we have one called, um, so this is a field list. So add existing fields and this is a field list. We're going to go ahead and choose in step P. We'll go ahead and click on the home page field. And then we'll drag the field to the field list pane below the email address until the shaded line displays between the email address and address one, and then drop it. So notice then it adds that field in there. So access displayed a shaded line to help you place the field into the correct location. Okay, if for some reason you get it in the wrong place, you can hit undo and then you can go ahead and repeat it, move it to where it should go. All right, so we'll go ahead and open up to page 86. So then we'll go ahead and switch to form view. So under views, we'll click form view. So now this allows us to go ahead and type information into it. We'll go ahead and go down, we'll hit tab until we get down to our homepage field. And then we'll type in there www.mrk.org. Because the homepage is a hyperlink field, access formats it automatically as such. Okay, so then if you were then notice now it's a hyperlink. So if I click on it, then it's going to open up the web browser and we'll see. Okay. It takes us there. Okay. To whatever that is. Okay. All right. So, all right. So now we'll go ahead and close, save the form, and then we'll go ahead and close it. All right. And then we'll go ahead and click on the revenue query. And then we'll go up here to uh, under create. We'll click on form. So now it's going to create a revenue form. And then we'll go ahead and switch to design view because we want to make some changes to this. All right. And then this time what we want to do is we'll click on the first label, which is last name. We'll select that. We'll press and hold the control key on the keyboard and then we'll click on each of the other controls. You could also hit control A on the keyboard as well. All right, so now what we wanna do is under the table group in the arrange tab, 
under the form uh, design, so table, we want to go ahead and remove layout because that's then going to go ahead and let us move everything independently. And so we'll have to go back and look onto the previous page, uh, 884. So we're going to go ahead and resize this in order for everything to be, to look exactly like how that is. And that's, that's step U. And then step V, then as we're going to move those uh, price and revenue, we'll move those out. So I'm going to go ahead and flip back over here to page 84 just so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to click here and move last name in. About like so, city. So you notice you can now drag these. I don't want to do that. I just want to change the uh, size. So move it so it's about even there. Order date. Product name. Probably about like so. Quantity. Cost. Percent markup. And then price. Okay. So we did that. So we went ahead and we have those now sized a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and go back over here to page 86. So now what I need to do is to click on the price control and click on the revenue control and the label. So the control and then the labels. And I'm going to drag them to about where and then what I want to do this time is I want to go ahead and save the form. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here to save and I'm going to call this revenue by order item. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then we'll close the form. So I'll go ahead and flip on over to 887. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to use step four, use a layout control and sort records in a form. So Ryung has an old sales reps form that she hopes you can make easier to read, but keep it in the vertical format. She tested the customer information form and likes the way it is working. However, she asks you to change the sort order to make it easier to find customers alphabetically by their names. Refer to figure 4.19 as you complete step four. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and open up the sales reps form. And then we'll go ahead and open it up in layout view. We notice that the form is not attractively laid out at all. So now what we can do is under the uh, selection group, okay, so format, selection, we'll go ahead and hit select all. So that selects all of the fields and the labels associated with them. We'll go ahead and do that and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on a range and then we'll go ahead and click under table 
we'll click tabular. We see that they are lined up horizontally across the top of the form. That's not that helpful. So then we'll go ahead and click stacked and we see that that's a lot better. So they are stacked vertically and the form is much easier to read. So then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and save it and then close it. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and open up the customer information form. And then we'll click on the next record down here at the bottom. Several times to advance to the records. Notice that the customers are in customer ID order. And then we'll go ahead and click, go back to the first record. I'll go to step H on page 888. So now what we'll do is we'll click on customer name. And then we'll click on a set, uh, sort ascending under sort and filter. Okay, so now we see that advanced sales displays, that's customer C0003, as it is the first customer name in alphabetical order is shown. And then if I click next record, you get Baker Auto Supply, which is customer C008. So now they're in order by customer name. And then we'll go ahead, since we changed the layout of this, we have to save the, the form and then we can go ahead and close it. So, so far what we've looked at is we've looked at, at forms. So now we're going to look at how to do various things with reports. So we'll go on over to page 903, hands-on exercise two, report basics. You can create a products report using the access report tool to help Ryung stay on top of the key information for her business. You will modify the column widths so that they all fit across one page. You will also use the report wizard to create additional reports that Ryung requires. Step one, creating reports using the reports tool. You use the reports tool to create an access report to help Ryung manage her product information. This report is especially useful for determining which products she needs to order to fill upcoming orders. You also use the report wizard to determine sales by city. Refer to figure 4.35 as you complete step one. All right, so we'll go ahead and do step A. So we already have this open. So what we're going to do is we're going to resave it. So we'll go up here to file and we'll go to save as. And then this time we're gonna go ahead and save it as A01H2Coffee, underscore first and last. All right. So this time what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select the products table in the navigation pane and then we'll go up here to create and then we'll go ahead and click on report. So it goes ahead and it creates then the products report and opens it up in layout view ready for editing. So then we'll go ahead and click on the product title at the top of the report to select it. We'll go ahead and click it again. And then we'll go ahead and change this to products report. And I'll press enter to accept the change. And then we'll go over to 904. And this time what we'll do is we'll right click on the report tab and then we'll go ahead and choose print preview. We notice that the report is too wide for the page. So if I go down, so notice then that it cuts off right here under markup percentage. And then if I click on the next page, so that doesn't work very well. And it isn't very helpful to us the way that it is now, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and close the print preview. And then what we'll do is for step F, we'll go ahead 
and under the page setup tab under the report layout tools we'll go ahead and change the report to landscape okay so now the report changes to landscape orientation most of the columns now fit on one page and you will make further revisions in the report later so that it all fits on one page so then what we'll do is for right now we'll right click and hit save they, we haven't saved it yet, so we need to go ahead and give it a name. And this time we're going to call it Products Report. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. We'll come back to this later. So now we can go ahead and close the report for now. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on the Revenue Query in a navigation pane. And we'll click on the Create tab. And then this time, rather than using the Report button, we're going to go ahead and use the Reports Wizard. Now, what I will tell you is the forms wizard is very similar so to this. So, but forms are for data entry reports, then our output used just to list things. But again, the wizards, they work very much in the same way. Notice that the report wizard launches. And so this time we can specify which fields I want in that report. So I want the city field. So I'll click on city and then I'll click the arrow to go ahead and bring it over here to selected fields. And then I'll do the same thing for order date, price, revenue, and product name. So these are the fields that were available. These are the ones that will be in our report on the right. And we'll click next. So here we can sort and add any grouping that we want. And so for this, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make sure that the city field is selected. And then we'll go ahead and click the arrow to sort by city. And then we'll go ahead and click next. So now what we can do is adjust how we want to sort the information. So we want to now sort by order date. So we'll choose that. And then we'll go ahead and sort that ascending. And then we'll click on summary options. And then for price, we'll go ahead and choose what we want to show the average price and then we'll click OK. And then we'll click Next. We'll click Next again to accept the default layout. This time what we'll do is for the report title, we'll go ahead and change that to be Sales by City and then we'll go ahead and click Finish. And so then it'll allow us to preview the report. Go ahead now and save it and close it. So then we'll go ahead and flip on over to 905. So we'll do step two, which is using report views. So the products report that we created looks good according to Ryong. However, she doesn't have access installed on her home computer and would like to have a copy of the report saved in PDF format so that she can review it outside the office. You will save a copy of the report for her. Refer to figure 4.36 as you complete step two. So this time what we'll do is we'll go ahead and open up the products report. So we go into reports. We'll double click on the product report that opens it up. And then what we'll do is we'll go up here to file and then print. Now we don't want to actually print this, but we'll go to print preview. So then it opens it up in print preview. And then we see here under the data group, we have this PDF or XPS. So we'll go ahead and choose that. And then we'll navigate to where, where we're saving our files. And then we're going to go ahead and call this AO4H2 products underscore last underscore last name first. And then we want to make sure this open file after publishing is selected. And then we'll go ahead and hit publish. So Windows will open the report in the system's default PDF viewer which may be Adobe Reader or the Windows Reader app. And then we can close the Reader window. You will submit this file. So it opens it up. If you have an Adobe Reader 
installed in your computer, it will open up Adobe Reader. If you have don't have that, it'll just open it up in the regular Windows uh, Reader. So we're done with this. So we can go ahead and hit the X. We can close it. Now, ensure that you return to the access window and in the export PDF dialog box, click close. So we don't, we're finished with this. It tells you where it saved it to. So for me, it saved it into the C drive, which is the hard drive, users, and then David Abbott, desktop, AOM 30, access chapter four, and then that.pdf successfully. So then we go ahead and hit close. And then we can go ahead and close the uh, print preview. So we'll go ahead and flip on over to 906. So step three, modifying report. Ryong realized the products table is missing a field that she requires for her reports. She would like you to add the field to the table and update the report to include the new field. She, also, she would also like to make sure the report fits nicely across one landscape page. She also asks you to show her some sample color schemes. Refer to figure 4.37 as you complete step three. Products table, so we're gonna right click on the products table, we'll go to design because we have to add another field to the table. That's what it is we're doing, okay? So then we'll, for markup percentages, we'll go ahead and click on that. And then under tools, we have here insert rows. We wanna insert a row. And this time we're gonna call this on hand. And then we'll go ahead and go over and then for the data type, we'll choose number. And then we'll go ahead and save the table. So we'll right click, save, and then we'll go ahead and close that. So now the new on hand column, it contains no data. Next you'll add sample data to, to that. So now I'll go ahead and open up table, notice right here. So then we're just gonna go ahead and say that we have 10 of each of these items on hand. So we'll go ahead and type the number 10 for each item's on hand value. And again, to move between the fields, you can, I mean, I'm pressing enter, but you can also press, press tab. So now I went ahead, put on hand 10 for each of our items. So then what we can do is go ahead and close the products table now. So now we'll go ahead and we'll go back over here then to our products report. We'll right click on that. And then now we'll go ahead and go to layout view. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on add existing field. Now we have on hand. And then we'll just go ahead and move that between the cost and the markup percentage right here. So we added that to it. So because of the tabular layout control, access adjusts all of the columns to make room for the on hand field. All right, so now we can go on over to page 907. So now if I go up here to File and Print, and I click on Print Preview, we now get an idea of what this looks like. So we see now that that's there. So we see that, all right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and close the Print Preview, make sure that I'm still in Layout View, which I am and then we'll scroll anywhere, we'll click anywhere in the year introduced column. So go down here. So year introduced column, that selects the column. And then under a range up here, we'll select that and then we'll go ahead and select, select column. And then we'll go ahead and press the delete key because we decided we don't want the year introduced listed. So now it's removed from the report. And then we can scroll to and click on the product ID heading. So right here. And then we'll drag it until the product ID heading still fits, but any extra white space has been removed. about like so, okay? And then we can go ahead and do the same thing for the 
refrigeration needed. Or we'll go ahead and change the name of that. So we'll click there. We'll go ahead and change that to refridge question mark. And then we'll go ahead likewise adjust the width of the column heading so that any extra white space is removed. Okay. So now what we can do is if we go back to the design tab, we can go ahead and click on themes and then we can choose the organic theme and apply it just to that object only, okay? And we format the report to the organic theme. This theme, the report is still too wide for a single page. So we're gonna have to make some additional adjustments to it. And now what we can do is go up here to file and then save as. This time what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and save it as object and then save as. This time we wanna call it products organic. So we have the regular product table report and then we have the products organic. So we have two different views in it. We can decide which one we want. So then we'll go ahead and ensure that the report is in layout view, which it is. And then notice that the brand column is extending over the dashed page break in the right and needs to be resized to fit. So then we'll go ahead and drag the, the border So now that's a lot better. And then we want to make sure that everything is visible, which it is. Then what we'll do then is we'll go up here again under design and then we'll go up here to themes and then we'll choose the retrospect theme. We want to be careful. So this time we're going to right click and then we're going to go ahead and say to apply to this object only. And so again, if you don't, say it to apply to that object only, then all of the database objects will adopt the retrospect theme. And then we'll go up here to file, save as, save object as, and then we'll go ahead and call this products retrospect. So now you're able to show Ryong two product reports with different themes added. We can go ahead and close out of the reports then. So we'll go, up, go on over here to page 908, step four, sorting records in a report. So Ryong would like the report, the product report records to be sorted and grouped by brand. You can change the sort order, group the records and preview the report to see the results. Refer to figure 4.38 as you complete step four. So then we'll go ahead and open up the products report in layout view. All right. And then this time what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on this sort group and sort. And then the add and the add a group and add a sort option appear at the bottom of the report. So we see that down here. So we want to add a sort. And then we want to go ahead and choose brand. Reports now sorted by brand in ascending order with discount at the top. So we see, we see that and then we can go ahead and view, view it in report view. And then we can go ahead and save and close the report. All right. 
So we're finished with that. 